Hi everybody, welcome to my fourth beam video. In this video I'm going to be plotting the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the beam that you see right here. So let's get started. The first thing you do when you're analyzing a beam and finding any sort of diagram, is you're going to want to find the reactions at each of the supports. So the way we do that is by making an overall free body diagram. Alright, here we go. Now you notice I've replaced this entire distributed load by a single point load acting right at the center. And we can do that because this whole distributed load is just, in effect, a point load that's spread out over a whole area. So we can condense it back into one point load and put it at the point that will represent the whole works. And that point is on a linearly distributed load that's halfway in between. Right, so the centroid of this distribution, that's right to center. And its magnitude, well this Q, that's in newtons per meter, times the number of meters, or in our case, a length. So this can be Q times the total length, which is L. So the magnitude of this force is Q L. And then summing up the forces and the Y, All right, and I assume they were the same because of the symmetry of the whole situation. All right, we could go to, uh, you know, call these R1, R2, and then do moments about some point, but that would just involve a further step of complication. So now, in order to find the shear force and bending moment diagram, we need to know the shear force and bending moment in all these points in the beam. So in this section here, this can be described by a single set of equations. So by making a cut here, where we can represent the whole piece. We'll look this way. Now here, boom, this changes. There's a reaction. So we make another cut here. And again, we'll look off to the left. Now I could make another cut here and either look this way or look this way. But I want to do something a little different when I draw the free body, well, free body, the, the diagrams. So you'll see what I do when I get there. Let's just call this one, two. I'm going to use a little bit of intuition to figure out what the rest of that thing should be. So, in order to get some mathematical values, let's go and take a free body diagram of piece 1. All right, and there you have it. Now notice just because I collapsed this load onto the middle of this beam to find out the overall, I can't just keep that load in the middle and pretend that it doesn't exist here. All right, you can only condense the load into a point force when you're doing an overall free body diagram. You can condense this little bit of load into a single force, which is what we're gonna do, but you can only do that per free body diagram. You can't condense it down into one just for the sake of this one and then keep it that way. You know, you have to keep the applied load in all the free body diagrams as you continue on. So this distance that we've cut this at is a distance x. And of course this is q here still. Alright, so the magnitude of this force by the same logic as this was ql, here it's just going to be qx. So knowing that, let's do the forces in the Y. All right, and now we can replace this with a single force 
or we'll just replace it with a big fat arrow, QX, and it acts at a distance, well, half this distance, because like I said before, the magnitude of an applied load acts as a single point load at the centroid of the distribution. In this case, it's a square or a triangle distribution. So the centroid of the distribution is there, and the force acts through that centroid at a distance x by 2. So knowing that, we can take the sum of the moments about the shear force end to be 0. Now I'll do that because if I would do it about you know some other point, potentially, in this case there is no reaction, but I always do it from here because if you did it where there was a reaction, you would have to know V1 to solve. That would mean using this information, and you could have made a mistake there. So to be safe, always do it about the cut end. So we say M1, that's positive. Now this bit here, the force, also creates a positive moment, times distance. This distance, that's x by 2, equals 0. So then, all right. Let's move on to the second free body diagram of this piece right here. Alright, there we have our free body diagram of that piece. So, how are we going to measure x in this case? Alright, here we just measured x to start from the very beginning and run out. In this case, we could make x do the same thing, start here or run out to here. But then you develop an equation where only a certain, only certain values of x would apply, because you could only really start to apply the values of x from right here, because in between here, that's actually a different equation. And when you went out to graph it, it would be a little tricky, because your coordinates would be starting here, and then you'd have to graph your line out here. Whereas if you start x at the support, your coordinates start at the support, and then you can just, you know, start drawing your lines right away. It makes your life a lot easier. At least I think so, so that's the way I'm going to do it. Alright, so let's go ahead and do some of the forces. Now, we have a few things to clear up here. I forgot, but there's technically a reaction here. That's what makes it change in the first place. And the magnitude of this load. Well, just like before, it's Q times the distance it acts on. So in our case, it's just going to be Q times L by 4 plus X. That's at a distance. Well, where does that act? Well, at the centroid of this whole distribution. So that's L by 4 plus X, that whole bit, divided by 2. But we'll get to that when we do the moments. All right. In our case, our shear force is down plus R minus Q times the length it's acting on to be zero. And substituting in our value of R to be QL by two, we get Okay, and I'm moving on to summing up the moments about this cut edge again. Alright, so now we want the magnitude of this force. Well, that was just the force per length times the length. And now the distance away from the point we're taking the moments where that force acts. Well, that's this whole distance divided by 2 because this is a square distribution. So L by 4 plus x. Okay, and once again, I just want to clarify here. Because we condensed this one down, 
to do our equations does not mean that we keep this condensed piece sitting over here. No. Every time you make a new free body diagram, that applied load has to be applied over the whole piece. Don't use any previous information in your new free body diagram. So rearranging this, we get Okay, so we found all the information in these two cuts we needed, and I'll explain how we're going to arrive at the information for the third one. So let's go ahead and get some plotting happening. So for starters, I'll just redraw the, the problem, and then I'll draw my axes for the bending moment and the shear force. All right, there we go. So let's use the information we found on the previous page to plot these. So these papers around here. Now nah, let's actually not keep them over here. So V1 is negative QX. So that's basically a negative slope of a value Q. What's the value here? Well, that's basically this equation evaluated when X equals to L by four. Right, so it's negative Q L by four. All right, now the next one, V two, is positive Q L by four minus Q X. Starts up here. Minus Q X is going to pass through zero, exactly halfway in between that distribution. All right. Now let's kind of use our intuition to solve what it's going to be next. So what we've described in mathematically you could also describe intuitively. So we start at the end of the beam, no shear force. Makes sense, there's nothing to provide a shear force. And as we move out into the beam, this applied load, Q, is going to start knocking us down. Alright, so it's going to start to like push you down to more and more. And then here at the reaction, bam, you get some huge reinforcements. And that bumps you up the magnitude of the reaction, which was QL by 2. Right, right there. And then, once we got those reinforcements, we get, again started to get bumped down by, you know, negative QX, right? As we went along, this bumped us down even further. And we kept on going down, 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 until here we get more reinforcements. Now, what is going to be the magnitude of those reinforcements? Well, that's just going to be the magnitude of this reaction. Well, once again, that reaction is QL by 2. Bump us up again to QL by 2. And then from there, what happens? Well, we're up high here, but we slowly get bumped down again until we get to zero at the end of the beam. All right? So that's the way you can kind of think of shear force. How it acts is basically you pretend you're traveling along, and then what's happening to you know, the shear force as you go. And then your reactions, you know, bring life or reinforcements back into your equation. Make a little story out of it. All right, so the bending moment, as we know, is related to the shear force by this. Or we can say that the moment is equal to the integral of the shear force with respect to distance. So that means our shear force is going to be having a slope that has a magnitude of the value of our of this piece here. So it's going to have no slope at all here, a negative slope here, a greater negative slope here, and a greater negative slope here. I right, so intuitively know that's going to be a quadratic. All right? Another way you can think of it is in terms of the order of the power. So here, we're at something to the power of zero. It's a constant. 
Here, we're to the power of 1. Here, we're to the power of 2. All right, I'm done with integrated. And deflection is another higher order, but that's an entirely separate matter. All right, so let's plot the bending moment. Let's first use the math we know. Negative qx squared by 2. All right, so we're going down here. And it's quadratic, because it's negative qx squared. All right, and if we want to figure out what the magnitude is there, we're going to evaluate it. So q by 2x is l by 4 squared. That's equal to ql by 32. That is negative. So this value here, negative ql by 32. Now what happens? Well, there's no jump because we haven't had an applied moment. All right, so unless you have an applied moment, there's not going to be a jump in the shear force. But we know, since this, or there's no, we know, no jump in the bending moment. But we know now the shear force is positive, so that means the slope of this is going to be positive. So we can imagine we're going to start off in a positive direction. And wait, here, the slope is slowly getting less positive, and at some point the slope becomes zero. So we're going to reach either the top of something or the bottom of something. All right? And then the slope becomes negative until a point again where it becomes just as negative, as much as this was positive. All right, so we can imagine this is going to go up and then down. Was well, it going to go above, below? All right, what we can do is evaluate m2 at the middle at x equals l by 4. So when we do that, All right, when we do that, we get m2 equals 0. All right, so that means there's absolutely no bending moment at all at the top here. So that we get that. And then we just connect the dots. OK, now what's going to happen here? Well, we know at the end there has to be no bending moment. All right, there's never a bending moment. And we know that it's going to be positive and then slowly less positive. So it only intuitively makes sense that the bending moment goes like this. All right, now two comments here. We could have got to this awesome looking bending moment by looking at the sagging profile of the beam. So you can imagine it's going to look like this. All right. And basically, when this. Uh, this thing is, you know, sad face, the bending moment is negative. When it's smiley face, it's positive. In our case, it never actually got to smiley face, so it's probably going to be more like, you know, this sort of different distribution here. And then we can just look at the concavity of that to test what's going on here. All right, so here it's like negative, negative smiley face, so it's going to be negative. Then it's going to positive smiley face. So if it's a positive smiley face with a positive bending moment, in this case it never quite got there. Another observation I want to make, check with the shape of this. This looks like the shape of some concrete girders you might see on the bottom of a bridge. And they're designed exactly for this reason. All right, because at the supports, the bending moment is the highest. So you're going to use the most material at that place. All right, so next time you see a bridge that has you know, arched bits, right where the columns are, that's why you know, now you know, that's because the bending moment is maximized right there, so you want to put the most material to resist it. And we'll get into that and the bending stresses later on. Alright, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out, and I'll see you in my next bunch of videos on beamings.